Greetings. There you are, right there. That's you. Greetings. Welcome back. We're making a new clock. Yeah, it's been a while since I've posted anything about clocks because of two reasons. The first of which is I have spent the last several months designing my own clock from scratch in a 3D modeling program, SketchUp. Used to be owned by Google. Now it's Trimble. I don't know. Anyway, pretty good at SketchUp because I use it for work sometimes. So I've been uh, <clears throat> taking some of the facts that I've learned about clocks from my previous two and a half builds, and I have designed a clock that I intend to build, and it will be entirely out of wood. So I spent several months designing this and I just finished the design last week. Um, so that's one reason I haven't posted anything in a long time because in general it's pretty boring to watch people do CAD on a computer. I mean I can barely keep my eyes open while I'm doing it. So, um, but I'm done and I will make those plans available once I've had a chance to build the first clock and make any necessary revisions to it. Uh, to make it really work well, I will post down in the doodly-doo a link to download my schematics for the clock so you can build your own if you want. Or maybe I'll sell it. I don't know, I'll put a lot of work into it. Maybe I'll sell it. Okay, so that's the first reason, is I've been working on designing one. Here's the second reason I haven't posted anything in a while. Oh, uh, again. His name is uh, Jack Anthony Haller. He's about three weeks old, and he takes up a lot of time. He's a good kid, though. Good sleeper, good eater. No complaints there. He gets more sleep than I do, and I'm very jealous of that. I'm trying not to hold it against you, buddy. But welcome to the family. So, we're going to have a little helper here. Um, so, two very good reasons. Now, let's talk about this clock. Let's talk about this clock. It's going to be a wall clock, uh, not like big boy back here. It's going to be a hangy do on the wall kind of clock with a meter long pendulum, a true pendulum, one beat per second, and uh, absolutely massive. I mean, here's I'm cutting out one of the pieces of the frame. It's a 20 inches diameter circle. Okay. So. Let's see, it's uh, it's entirely wood. The frame's made out of half inch thick wood. The gears and other components will be made out of quarter inch thick. And uh, I've designed all this stuff and then in a 3D modeling program, took the parts and flattened them and put them on a one inch grid. And then I had this huge template printed at like a place that prints construction prints. Uh, there's one in town called Repro Graphics. And that's why I printed it out there. 36 inches by 9 feet. So 3 feet by 9 feet. It might be more than 9 feet. It's, I mean, this thing's huge. Here's the rest of it. I've already cut off all of the half inch parts. And I'm working on them now. But here are the remaining quarter inch thick parts. Oh, it just goes on, man. It goes on and on, and I will make these available once I've had a chance to revise them so that I know that they work. All right, I'm hoping you'll track with me through the process of cutting these out, gluing them onto wood, cutting them out of the wood, sanding, staining, lacquering them, and assembling the clock and diagnosing it and getting it to work. It's going to be fun. I think if I work on it regularly, it might take three weeks of, like, evenings working on it with the occasional weekend thrown in. Uh, I could be terribly wrong. It might be another five months, like the Peace Tower clock, which, now that I'm totally finished with that clock, I don't know if you've been following along with the other clocks I built, Peace Tower clock was a mistake. I mean, I did a hell of a job building it, but I did two things wrong. Number one, I assumed it would be as fun and easy as the medieval clock, and it just, it's not. It's not. It's a pain. It's, it's pain in the neck. It's not a fun clock to build. It's bad. Um, and then the other thing is 
maybe overestimated my abilities. And I was watching a lot of TV and um, movies and stuff while I was working on it. So I only had one ear in reality. It didn't turn out that great. I think I should have paid a lot more attention. Well, when I got started, when I got started, the only ruler I had was about this long, and I ha did not have any kind of measuring tools. Since I've started building that clock, I have acquired calipers and other measuring tools. I got freaking compass. Okay, so just I've I, maybe if I tried it again, it would turn out different. But I can't keep it running more than a couple hours. And I'm not sure why that is. And I'm really sick to the teeth of working on it. So, let's work on a new one. I haven't decided on a name for this clock yet. I'm thinking Petri. The Petri clock. Or maybe Petra. Yeah, there you go. Petra. Petra. The Petra clock. Because it's, it's made of wood. And it's a timepiece. A wooden timepiece. So piece of old piece of wood is petrified wood so petra huh you don't like it well come up with a better one and leave it in the comments then and maybe i'll consider it and if i pick your name for the clock i'll give you a free copy of the template how about that um okay so i'm cutting out the pieces great then I'm gluing them onto the pieces of wood I got from Home Depot. Okay, then I'm going to cut them out, use the jigsaw, and once I get all the pieces of the frame, I'm going to drill the holes for the, um, the crossbars that hold them all in place and make sure they're all lined up. i got to have them all cut out before I drill the holes to make sure the holes line up. So this is what I'm going to be doing for the foreseeable future, is just cutting out these pages, gluing them onto paper, uh, onto wood, and then cutting them out. Nothing really interesting is going to happen until that part is done. But I don't want to rush it. I want to take my time. I'm going to, like I said, put them on the wood and cut them out. Then I've got, at the recommendation of my grandfather, who is a lifetime, he's a master woodworker. I got this sanding sealer. He said you got to seal it so that you got to seal it up to keep the humidity out because if you don't, the wood will warp, the clock will stop. If you put this on there, the wood will not warp. Like good furniture or something, I guess the wood doesn't warp. So we got sanding sealer. I'm going to seal it and sand it. I think in that order. I don't know. This says sand first and then seal. Maybe I'll sand it and then seal it. I don't know. I haven't figured it out that far yet. But after that, we got the good old lacquer. Use that on all the other clocks. This is good stuff. Makes it a good hard surface that uh, doesn't wear down as fast as wood might. Let's see, we got a new Dremel. $10 Dremel tool from Harbor Freight Hazard Fraud. Uh, they last about as long as one clock project, so I just end up getting a new one for each clock. And then, for this one, there's, for this clock, there's going to be a lot of axle holes in the base, in the frame, in the gears. There's axle holes and everything, and they have to be, like, perfect up and down. And I learned from drilling the few previous gears in the other clocks, I'm no good at this. I'm no good at this doing it by hand, so I got a new tool. Behold, my bench drill press. Ah, cool, huh? Yes, yes. I know you're all jealous. You're jealous of my drill press. What? Yes, it was cheap. It was from Harbor Freight. Well, it only needed to last as long as it takes to build this clock. It was 65 bucks, you know? Can't beat that. As AVE says, sore dick deal. Can't beat it. Let's see what else we have. We've got glue. I'm using two parts Elmer's glue, one part water in a baby food jar with a cheap sponge paintbrush to apply the glue onto the paper so that I can put the paper on the wood. I have noticed, I suspected this might happen and I was right. 
When you get glue on enough of the paper, the paper begins to warp. It becomes elastic. And if you're not careful, when you put it on the wood, it will deform. So you have to be really careful when you're applying the glue to the paper and applying the paper to the wood to make sure you maintain its shape and size uh, while also avoiding wrinkles. So I'm still working on the most effective method to do that. But it seems like if I put it glue on like a quarter of the paper, and then if I just put glue on a quarter of the paper, and then kind of fold it over a little bit, and glue it. You know, I'm about to just show you. All right, can you see all right? So here's a piece. Imagine the table's wood. You put a little bit of glue on the very end and put it down. Okay, and it's down. And then you put a little bit more glue on the next parts and then fold it down and then so on and so forth until it's down. That's I've only done one of these and I did that. It worked out all right, but I'm still not totally thrilled with it. So I'll see if I can find a better way to do it. I might put the glue on the wood first. These frame pieces are a little more intricate than say a gear and they're huge. So once I get down to the gears, and pulleys and stuff, it may not be that big a deal. So we'll see what happens. Anything else worth mentioning? Still got my trusty number 11 blade. I have a normal pair of scissors, but I don't intend to use them much. I've got a brand new box of drill bits. Every size and shape and flavor you could want. And I've got... Oh, oh! One of the things about Home Depot that I like is they sell rods, like dowel rods, metal rods, all kinds of rods. So I just got like a handful of rods, what I think I might need, and then some. I got some half inch, I got a square one I might try for the pendulum, although the original pendulum design is circular, I thought a square might deform even less. I've got an aluminum bar, uh, three eighths. I've got three eighths wooden dowel rod, and this is oak. This is oak wood, and man, it is strong. I was really worried that my thin little crossbars on a clock might not hold, but this will do it. I know this will do it. This is much stronger than it looks. They have some other ones of another type of wood that's not nearly as strong. And then I have, of course, my eighth inch steel rod, which will be most of the axles are going to be this. So, let's talk about this clock that I've designed. I don't have any visual aids right now, so I'm just going to tell you about it. Okay, so features of the clock. Let me show you its features. Uh, the clock will hopefully have a second hand. I've designed it such that it can have a second hand. You don't see too many homebrew wood clocks with second hands. So, look ye tardy upon my second hand, and, what's the word? Look ye upon my works, and despair, yes. Look ye tardy upon my second hand, and despair. So it's going to have a second hand. It's going to have a winding time of three and a half days. Hopefully. I'm using the string down and double back up with a pulley on the weight like I did on the on both the other clocks. It worked out really well on the Revit clock. It didn't work so well on the Peace Tower clock, but that's not the pulley and weight's fault. It's the problem that the clock is made out of literal paper and can't handle the extra weight. So the whole clock sags. It's a bad deal. Um, so second hand... Double back string should give me three and a half days between windings. I was originally designing it for seven days, but I just, the more runtime you want, the smaller the diameter on the spindle, the spool of the motor wheel has to be, and it just got to be so small. It's like, there's no way. It, I think in order to get what I wanted and to put it where I wanted to put it, it had to be about an eighth inch thick with like string wrapped around it. Now I know that I'd have to put like a ton on the end of that to actually get any force out of it. So, um, the smaller the spindle, 
the, small, the smaller the spool, the more the weight you have to put. The more the weight, heavier the clock, heavier the clock, the more reinforcement you need. And eventually it just gets to a point where it's not, it's unrealistic. So I have about an inch and a half diameter spool for the string to wind around. And that should give me three and a half days by my calculations. Um, what other features does it have? Second hand, three and a half days. It's, oh, the very first thing I designed on the clock was the escape wheel. I made as big of an escape wheel as I physically could fit in the clock with a fully adjustable verge with a little adjustment arm that sticks out the side. So I can make any adjustment I need to make to this thing without having to take anything apart or ha even having to reach inside the clock. I don't have to do that. I can adjust it all from the outside. It's important to me because I'm going to spend a lot of time tinkering with it. I won't need any tools to adjust it. Pretty happy about that one. Uh, that was, I'm using the same verge and escapement that I used in the Peace Tower clock, which worked pretty well. It's got some other issues I haven't determined, but the biggest problem with it in the Peace Tower clock is it's too darn small. I couldn't make it as big as I wanted it to because there was so many cross beams and stuff in the frame that it prevented me from making the wheel bigger than like three or four inches in the Peace Tower clock. And I had to cut it seven times before I finally got one that worked just because it's so small and intricate and wood and I was doing it by hand. This time it's going to be like 17 inches. Great big giant escapement. Super easy to adjust. I'm just worried that with gears that big, there's going to be so much momentum stored up in those gears, kinetic energy, inertia, that they're not going to want to turn very easily. So I've got my Teflon spray, which we'll get to in a few episodes. Um, I still, I'm not sure. I mean, I designed all of this to work with bearings. I've ordered the bearings. They're not here yet. But here is an old one. For example... Boom. Bearings. I think this one's actually out of a skateboard. At one point I was trying to see if I could design it for skateboard bearings because I know I can buy these. The problem is it's not as smooth as I would want it to be. It's like, maybe it's a cheap bearing. Maybe it's not designed for this. But it's got a lot of static friction. The coefficient of static friction is pretty high, which means it takes a lot of force to get it going initially. Once it's going, it's fine, but once just to get it going, it's kind of hard. Um, and the problem with that is that's all clock does is it goes stop, go stop, go stop, go stop. So I'm wondering that if I have too many of these on there, it just won't want to turn at all. But I've designed it with two sizes of bearings, one for the eight inch rod and one for the three quarters. We'll see how it works. I'll let you know. Okay, what else can I say about this clock? Oh, uh, it's, like I said, diameter is 20 inches, which is, it's big. It's bigger than you think it would be. And then it's going to be, of course, have a meter long pendulum. And then I've designed it to have a hang height of four feet for the weight to fall. Should give me three and a half days. If you hang it higher, obviously you can get more time out of it. But by the time you factor in the height of the weight and the height of the clock and the height of your average room, four feet is about all you're going to get for drop. <clears throat> I say that's what the other two clocks have, and so that's what I stuck with. And then the, the thickness of the body of the face is going to be about eight inches, so 20 inches uh, wide, eight inches deep, which is a lot. But I'm hoping that by the time it's on the wall, it won't be a big deal. Part of the problem is I insisted on five sections of frame uh, with gears in between because I wanted to isolate the gears as much as possible. I didn't want to risk them rubbing up on each other. Some of the tolerances are pretty fine, like an eighth of an inch or less between moving parts. And I didn't want, if I got a gear that wasn't perfectly straight up and down, might rub on the gear next to it. So I tried to put as many s slices of frame in there. Um, and because of that, they made it kind of thick. So I may experiment with some revisions where I take one or two slices of the frame out 
if I am able to use this drill press to get my frames perpendicular enough to get the gears perpendicular enough that nothing, I don't have to worry about it rubbing. Then yeah, we'll just take some frame out, cut a couple inches off of that depth, we'll be good to go. But we'll see. That's what, this is the prototype. Anything else that I should talk about? Oh, man, I wish I had like a picture of the clock. Oh, I know. I should build one so you can see it. Stay tuned and we'll build it together. Next time.